Um, so I got a new computer. <laughs> And I got a, I got another one. Oh. <laughs> I got I got another new computer. Um, just I, I, I'm specifically showing you this because you know it's it's important. It's yeah. important for you. I'm putting a new binder on my contract. <laughs> Not to harass me with any kind of. <laughs> it's so great, but uh, it's a new Mac Mini, and I'm transitioning out of my old one. And in the meantime, I'm trying to like organize everything. So we have a new intro. Anyway, how are you? Are you? Do you feel like you're kind of like trying to catch up with everything because it's Monday? And I mean, how do you feel about today? Yes, I've been running around crazy, um, trying to catch up. Yeah, it's like it's like I, I haven't done a whole lot yesterday. You just didn't do a whole lot since I got back in town, to be completely honest. And where were you, sir? Where did you go? <laughs> in Florida with you. With <laughs> actually, you. yeah, for those who don't know, for those who are uh, are wondering, um, I was actually in the United States for a quick second. Um, and we actually had our uh, fear mastermind that we have uh, been talking about for quite some time. Um, and oh, we got some people saying yes. We got a little like hands over there. <laughs> my, I smell that. Why do the little hands that are going on? Um, yeah, we. So for those who don't know, we've been having. Uh, we've been talking about this mastermind for quite some time. Um, we had our launch. For a decade. Is it for a decade? It feels. It feels <laughs> it like a feels long like. time. It feels like <laughs> it. Yeah. And um, and we finally had our first live event, and that was uh, in Florida. And we got many more to come, and it's kind of like the highlight of today's topic, which is, you know, uh, do you need a mastermind? Actually, what is a mastermind, and do you need one? And that's what we're going to cover today, because this is like really important for a lot of people. A lot, it's kind of interesting. Like the more we've been talking about it, the more I've been hearing people say they're in masterminds, and then when I ask them the details of it, they don't. It sounds just like they're in a Facebook group. <laughs> to be honest with you. But um, but yeah, it's 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 really interesting. So Mike, let's let's kick it off about before we get into what happened and, and how it went and all that good stuff. Let's let's talk about what what is a mastermind. That's a good question. Um, a lot of people ask me that, and, and you know, there's before we get into what is it, masterminds are for mm. all kinds of things. Uh, mm. Things I didn't even realize over this week actually <laughs> uh, that masterminds can be for, but it, it's. I think the simplest way to, to, to describe it is a group of peers, your peers, mm. that you all have a common goal. And most of the time that goal is to build your business, be a better business. Yeah, that's, that's the uh, no, dumbed down version of it. Yeah. And that's, that's a good way to put it too, because I think it's what most people don't realize is that mastermind can be for many different industries. But for this mastermind, for what we have in our mastermind, it's specifically for real estate investors who want to grow their business, specifically in a few main areas like marketing and operations and procedures. Um, and in order to do that, you have to, the best way and the fastest way to do that is get around other people who have similar success or even more success than you so that you can learn from them and you can say, oh, that sounds good. I wanna go apply that. Mike, What's the? what do you think is the difference between someone going to a seminar and being in a mastermind? Um, well, a seminar, 9.9% of the time, 99.9% of the time, it, it's it's to give you grains of information to get you to buy something. And it's it's not being, and it's one-sided usually. It's usually a speaker. That's, a up there. That's the key difference. You know, mastermind A, you're not selling one other things. But you're being completely open and vulnerable, vulnerable about your business. It's it's much more interactive too. It's not a, you know, this is what we do and this is how we do it type thing. You know, you 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 kind of lay out your business, what's working for it, what's not. Yeah. And you've got what I almost call your board of directors that's sitting in front of you. You're you're mm. you're kind of important to your board of directors. Yeah. I, I like how you put that about the one-sidedness. That's something I've always found with seminars. It's like you have one person on stage 
lecturing or, you know, presenting and telling you about some niche strategy or something like that, whether they do it or not, whether they actually are full time in the business or not, they're just basically lecturing on a process. I think that is something, and especially being many years into this business, is the biggest defining difference um, about the difference between a seminar and a mastermind. I, I like also how you said the, um, the 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 fact like there's like mindedness because if right. you go to a seminar, I mean, how many times have we seen in a seminar where? You know, we can ask somebody, all right, how many people have done their first deal? And, you know, very few hands go up. And then how many people have closed at least one deal? Okay, a few hands go up, right? But the majority of people haven't done their first deal, right? And uh, it's like 80% or 90% of the room haven't done a deal, right? And uh, I think that's another big separating factor is in a mastermind, a good mastermind actually is where it can sift and sort. It can weed out the newbies from the people or from the newbies to the doobies. <laughs> well, and, and you can tell it in, in networking, you know, even our past mastermind, everyone I networked with in the mansion was, um, you know, they knew what I was talking about. I knew what they were talking about. Mm. We were on the level. It yeah. wasn't me with somebody that's done one or two deals. These, these are all players in the field. And I like how you say it. it's like-minded people it's almost a not a country club. I don't like that, but like a business club of of, mm. of minded people that come together. And there's a little exclusivity to it because you do have to be at that mark. Yeah. Well, you did. You you brought up two parts: exclusivity, and you said mansion. So, Mike, tell us a little bit about like your experience. I know you and I have both been in masterminds before. Um, right. But tell us, like, what was what's been your experience, and what did you think about it personally? I have been in the Mac Daddy of all masterminds in the mastermind world, and I'm not going to name it, yeah. but I can tell you that the accommodations where we were was much more lavish, much nicer, <laughs> yeah, and I got a lot more out of it. Mm. Um, but it, it, it's it's. What was the question again? I got <laughs> so in, in your personal experience, you've been in other masterminds before. Yeah. What would you say was the biggest difference and what made more of an impact on this one? This one, I think from day one, from Sunday night, when people started arriving, everybody clicked better than anything. Mm. I think I uh, talked about uh, we had a, a bar, a pretty high bar yeah. that we all were hoping and praying that we would that we would get to mm-hmm. and, and we leaped over it like backwards and forwards. Um, yeah. It's just the connectivity was so good, which I think in turn helped people to be open. I don't think anybody was reserved That's with true. what they were um, presenting, including myself. And, 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 you know, and part of my presentation even was about vulnerability. Yeah. No, that's a good point. Cause I, I agree with you. Everybody clicked. I also think the environment can click. Right, made it, excuse me, the environment made it more um, easier to relax. I mean, how many times, Mike, have we been in a hotel conference room, right? And then if you want to get away, you just go up to your room and you kind of like leave everybody behind and you only meet with people like in the conference room, right? It's kind of like, eh. this has yeah, and more. A lot of times that. in the conference room, I want to run up to the elevator, run up to my room. Nobody <laughs> yeah. wanted to. Right. You know, just for a minute. But here, you know, it, it wasn't that atmosphere. It's like nobody ran up to their room. Everybody wanted to just socialize and, and, and talk. And, and, and hearing people, you know, I just kind of just listening to conversations when I wasn't involved in one, how people were explaining their business. And, and, and outside of the meeting part of it, people were still engaged in helping one another in their businesses. And, and just to, to be under one roof – and for you, those of you who don't know, we we rented a mansion, mm-hmm. nine thousand square foot. It was huge. Yeah. Um, Had an elevator. There in the mansion and go up to your room if you, <laughs> if you want. Elevator, but it, it just it opened up an environment of a family. It's mm-hmm. a family atmosphere. You know, it's sitting in a hotel. If you're in a lobby or in a hotel bar or whatever, you got everybody and their brother listening. This yeah. was the folks in this in, in within you know the house wherever you were. 
um, with multiple activities to do and different conversations happening all over. Yeah. Yeah, that's very true. It makes it much more personable where people can like open up, you know, instead of like, you know, you open up on the couch or you open up, you know, and being conversational next to the swimming pool or in the kitchen while you're making food together. You know, it, it's just it has a different vibe to it. And that's really important because like you said earlier, sometimes when you're being vulnerable in your business, you want to be in a place of comfort. So, you don't you don't want to feel judged, you know, leave your ego at the door. Right. It's just you feel comfortable with the people that are around you. And I agree. I, I feel like everybody clicked and they 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 were able to uh, in a short amount of time. Some people did never met each other before, but they felt real comfortable by the environment um, and were able to learn. Oh, well, that was one of the biggest things, Mike. And maybe maybe if you could recall, I know this is like a pop up question, but what would you say has been your biggest takeaway from from this mastermind? Uh, one of the biggest takeaways is just the wealth of knowledge, not only that um, things that I was looking for help in my business, but things that I took from other people presenting and, and people responding to their problems that I can take nuggets of that and also implement in my business. Mm. Kind of, you don't know what you don't know type thing. Right. It was that I hadn't thought about. It's like, ah, oh, a light bulb goes off. Well, I could use that in my business as well. Yeah, that's so true. A lot of that was in marketing. I know both of both you and I were back and forth on some marketing things that popped up that I just never had thought about knowing. Yeah. Yeah. And that, I think that's what another part of that, an element of being in a mastermind is you're getting these ideas, right? More, more than, I think more importantly than that, one of my biggest takeaways was, <clears throat> is not only just the idea sharing, for me, it was more like the implementation. It's like, I think I mentioned this in my presentation, <clears throat> excuse me, where um, after you, you know, share your goals and share what your challenges are, you have like a room full of people or a gr group of people that are saying like, they know now what your goals are. You know, they now know what you're trying to achieve. And for me, that really makes an impact because I like that accountability factor. I like there's like that, oh, I got to do this before, you know, our next meeting or I have to get this done before. It just, I like that pressure. Um, and, uh, and I, and I think that that's really important uh, in growing a business. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And like you said, uh, everyone knows your goals now and, and, and everyone is in alignment and can help you with those. And you know what, what's cool about it is, yeah, we meet three, three or so times a year in person but we're also meeting monthly. Right. So we need that help um, on a monthly basis, as well as, you know, if I need to call one of the members and say, Hey, Paul, you talked about so-and-so in your business. I got the notes on it, but I had a particular question. I can reach out and call him at any time or, or email him or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That, and that's, again, that's the power of the connections and the power of the uh, mastermind. It's, you know, how many times, I mean, I can think of this so many times, Mike, when I went to a seminar and yeah, everybody's passing out business cards and then do people really follow up with those business cards? I know most people don't. I know I didn't sometimes like it was just like, whatever, you know, it goes up in a shoebox, right? <laughs> Business cards. Right. I mean, I, I mean that's, it's business cards of people I've collected at different seminars and stuff. Not to say that I do keep them in case it's something I need to reach out. Yeah. But you, these people, you, you learn on a personal level. Right. It's not just a business level. You know, you learn about their background, how they came where they are now, what their goals are, what they want to do, things like that. Mm -hmm. And that helps, I think, inform me and helping them, you know, with opinions about their business as well. Because of our commitment to it and the continual finding the right people and connecting with them, I think, again, it just attracts um, the right people. Not to say, by the way, I just want to don't, don't, don't want to bring this into light. We have members that haven't d didn't come out for for various reasons work or because of COVID, but that doesn't mean they couldn't be a part of the mastermind. We have people like, you know, virtually, um, you know, in the meeting um, and uh, that will be interacting so in the meeting. They were interacting in the meeting. Exactly. Yeah. They were interacting and, and doing their part in their presentation. And, um, but, you know, eventually we would, you know, that may happen for some of our members, but we'd eventually like to see all of our members. And so the, 
the location was, you know, uh, was which was ideal. I think going in, I remember when we entered the gate of the the community. I mean, I mean, you're just seeing million dollar house after million dollar house after million dollar house, and it just gets you thinking. Like, if you've never been in a million dollar house before, or you know, any large piece of real estate, any mansions, this will just get your mind thinking like right away. Like, whoa, what if? It puts if? you in a mindset. It puts you in that higher mindset set bracket type thing yeah uh, yeah i agree it's like you know it gives you the opportunity to say wow this is nice what if right what if and, and that's the beautiful thing about what we do in real estate and also it's a beautiful piece of real estate you know it's like we can admire real estate because we're in real estate and um it also uh puts you know puts that into perspective for us um also hey mike what did you think about dave he was our dave seymour our featured guest speaker what were your thoughts and, and feedback from him, from that on day two? Well, you know, I've always been a fan of Dave and his energy level mm. is out the roof. And if you've, you know, seen him on TV or wherever, you know his energy level. It's the same in person, if not more. Yeah. But he's very engaged. I know I'll, I'll give you one prime example. Him and I were sitting toward the back of the room. And by the way, we didn't do our – our, our presentations and stuff in straight back chairs and, 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 you know, in a living room or something, mm. we did it in the theater room. Yeah. In honors. Mm. Everybody was <laughs> unique aspect of it. But yeah. Dave and I were sitting kind of back corner and one of the members was presenting. And, and, you know, sometimes you think, well, your star speaker, are they really listening or whatever? Immediately popped up something on the screen. And Dave just gave a grain of nugget, go to this, set this up. This will work tremendously to get rid of the, what you've got going now. Just things like that w was great with Dave. He yeah. interacted well. You know, the great thing I liked, he, he talked about um, syndication things and, mm -hmm. and apartments, the type of apartments. I know even in talking with one of our, our members and partner, Jonathan, has even got Jonathan looking at a different level of apartments, mm -hmm. um, you know, departments but um and the cool thing is he was available not only before he spoke for people to get to know him meet him or everything yeah time to hang around afterwards um uh, and and i thought that was really that was really commendable you know he was very approachable um you know mm -hmm. uh, my son is still trying to get all my financials so he can become accredited to, to yeah <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but uh, um, but yeah, I mean, he he was really good, and and he provides some really good information, and he 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 just it, it was very um, a casual casual atmosphere. He wasn't up there, you know, standing walking back and forth. He he actually sat in one of the bar chairs, and made it more personal, you know, talking with us as a group. It was more of a conversation than a speech so to speak that's so true yeah you bring up good points i mean there's no there was no ego there was no air i mean you know dave's been on you know multiple tv networks and has a show that anybody can watch on like amazon prime and other networks and stuff like that and uh so there are times i mean i've been to some events not a not specifically a mastermind but some other events that you know the speaker comes they do their book signing and they're gone like you can't even you can't even take a photo with them or sometimes they do and it's like oh hey bye let me take a photo with you and, and they're out that was that was a really uh impactful thing and that's the kind of quality people we want to bring in to the mastermind on a consistent basis is someone who <clears throat> can not only just give their presentation but also add value and critiques and also you know dive a little deeper into uh into the topic and into our our members lives i think that's i think that's awesome i think everybody liked I liked Dave's presentation and I, what I heard a lot of what the people liked from the feedback that I heard was they liked how he peeled back the process of asking for the sale and the steps within it, you know, the, yeah, the presentation part. I think people were really surprised at that. Actually, they think, I think many people were thinking, Oh, it's just real estate, but he actually unveiled the process in a sales process as he was speaking. There's a technique to it. It's a technique and, and yeah. not everybody yeah. Yeah, that's very true. Not many people even know about it or understand it or even how to do it. But yeah, when you learn from him, he's a master at it for sure. I mean, that's he's a sought after speaker for it. And 
And when you learn those techniques and you can apply them into your everyday business, or even when you do your own presentations, it, it really can make an impact. So yeah, that was those were some of my uh, favorite takeaways. I really enjoyed having him there. Um, what was uh, on on our last day, our day th day three? Um, what would you say is your biggest takeaway from the, the third day? Um, you know, we went over the um, um, the, the disc profile, uh, the disc the disc profile. Yeah, and actually, that I, I think nailed everyone. It was really neat going around the room trying to guess what everyone's was. Yeah, but actual actually. Um, enlighten you to, to maybe you're a little different than you perceive yourself. But once you see that, you see that. I know one of our members realized that, you know, Hey, due to my personality, I may need to make a, a, a little bit of company adjustments in, mm -hmm. in my ship roles or in my management roles. Um, so those great things, I thought that that was a really good thing that came out and it showed you what your, your strengths are, but also what your weaknesses are. And, and, Rather, you build on the, you know, build those weaknesses up, or you put somebody in to complement your weaknesses with your strengths. Yeah, that's tr that's true. And I think most people think like, you know, taking a personality task uh, test is something that people are like, oh yeah, I know what I am. But actually, this is much more deeper than that um, because not only did we discover something new, like I, I think everybody when we were, you know, asking and and, and probing about, you know, our results. I think people were learning something new about them, but also how to refine themselves in their business. Yep. One of the, my, I think one of my biggest takeaways about that day was how I already knew, like just by reading off the four, I was like, yeah, that's me. But it was actually hearing, it was actually one of our members uh, made a comment to me. Um, and that comment like really just sunk in. And I said, okay, how can I apply that more into my business? And it was just a quick comment right there at the kitchen. Um, and it just got me thinking. And, and sometimes that's, I think, the most beautiful part about a mastermind is sometimes it's just one statement, one question, right. one remark, one tip, one, right? And all of a sudden your business can just make not an impact like, oh, everything's going to change, but an impact for growth. And... Man, just hearing the feedback after after we closed up, you know, and everybody was, you know, heading home and stuff. The feedback was like overwhelming. It was very, it's very good to hear, um, you know, people's feedback. So I wanted to just take a moment for those who are, you know, maybe looking for a mastermind, thinking about being in a mastermind, or you know, maybe you just want to challenge yourself to get into one. So I want to break down. Actually, Mike, I'll, I'll turn this over to you, but. Mike, break down for our members what, you know, one of the biggest qualifying factors is in their business to get into this mastermind. Yeah, the biggest qualifying factor is you, you've got to be a player in, in the in the game. And, and what I mean by that is you got to be doing a minimum of 25 deals or, or 25 rental properties, something like that, to show that you're, you're all in, you know what you're doing. And it's not that, that, that we're trying to, be little folks that are not there yet. I, I wasn't there at some point in my life, but once you get there, it just puts you in a, in a different league um, with other like, like-minded people. So that's, that's the biggest thing is the amount of deals you need to do uh, to get into it, I believe. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's very, that's a great point. It goes back to what we said earlier is you're in the room with like-minded individuals, you know, and you're in people who are not just brand new. You're you're in the room with people who've already done it, so we we totally we've seen their impact of having that you know first qualifying factor in in the mix. Like you have to at least have done twenty five transactions, um, right? And another thing to keep in mind is is it's it's not just one particular piece of real estate. It's not houses. It's not land. It, we have people in there that's doing land. We have people in there that's doing multifamily house flipping right. stuff, rental properties, a mixture of them. So and that's what I kind of I really like about it because if I a lot of us are looking to at that level of your business you've got your good foundation built mm -hmm. and you've got a basis that you can afford to explore other diverse opportunities mm -hmm. and you've got members of your group that you can pick their brains yeah. 
Yeah, that's very true. There's sometimes people who are transitioning out of a strategy, maybe they've been doing it, or they automated it to a point where they you know, want to transition or they want to get to that point of automating it and maybe transferring into like duplexes or multifamily commercial and stuff like that. Nothing wrong with that. But for those who are, you know, if you're listening to this and and you're saying, you know what, I want to just get to one, right? I, I'd love to be in a mastermind where I'm at 25, but Mike, Nathan, I just want to get my first deal done. Or maybe, maybe this is you. Maybe you've done one or two deals, but you haven't been able to do your third and beyond. Maybe you're just feeling stuck. You're hitting a wall. Maybe things have happened. But I don't. I want us to also give you the opportunity to get started in real estate. So, on this page or in the show notes, you will find a link where you can click on that link and hit on our get started uh, page. On that page, we will be sending you a uh, guide on how to get started, and we'll also give you some uh, a video training on how to best get you up and running uh, in your real estate business. So you can click on that. And, uh, and then from there, we can work with you to help you grow and scale your business to 25 deals and beyond. Um, and that way you can you know, build a good business. Mike, we've seen this time and time again with our members, our, our members who are closing deals. I know we didn't kick off the show this time with that, but you know, our members who are always closing deals on a, on a regular basis, which is an awesome thing. Yeah, it really is. And it's, it's really fun working working with folks that's getting started in there or kind of stuck in their business, helping them out and growing. And we've actually got members knocking on the door of the mastermind now. Their, so their, their deals are getting close to those deal numbers. And that's exciting. Yeah, that is that is so cool. I love when I hear our members, like they're counting down, right? They're like, oh, you know, five to go or 10 to go, however many they have. And it's that push, right? And that's that's truly an exciting thing to see. Uh, be, lives being changed, incomes earned, uh, and people taking it to the next level. So this is good stuff. So again, if you are interested in either working with us to help you get started on your first deal, your second deal, or beyond, or if maybe you're at a level where you are looking for a mastermind, a group of individuals who are like-minded, who can help you scale your business to that next level, then click on some of the links in the description below and we will help guide you, take you to that next level. Mike, it has been it was great to see you. It really was. <laughs> but now we're back to our virtual lifestyle. <laughs> What's it's been that? a long year. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's been a long year. I can't believe I didn't travel for an entire year. It was just so good to get out. I was like a bird out of a cage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. Now we can go get some sleep, <laughs> get some rest. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for watching the or listening to the No Fear Investing Show. Um, if you are watching us on YouTube, like, like and subscribe. If you are catching us on our podcast, be sure to leave a review and uh, keep the momentum going. We'll see you next time. Take care.